What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the average 40 time for a Division I wide receiver. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it can teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like to get faster and want specific drills and exercises to do so, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to 70-plus speed and agility drills all broken down into categories for you guys, and we organize each specific drill by sets and reps and give you the exact technique to follow. So check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to, again, 70 plus speed and agility drills. Again, very first link in that description below. Let's get started with this video. So now when it comes down to the 40 yard dash, me personally, I don't think the exact time matters that much for a high school wide receiver, a youth wide receiver. I only think the exact time matters when you're a wide receiver in college trying to get ready for the NFL combine. I think that's the only time that the exact time matters. And again, you could have a bad start. You could stand up at the start, and that may not dictate your true on-field speed. So the best advice that I can give to you guys, especially being a wide receiver, is do not focus so much on the exact time. Because at the end of the day, everybody lies on their 40-yard dash. I will tell you this right now. Everybody lies on their 40-yard dash in their Twitter bio, what they put out on a recruiting questionnaire, because everybody wants to seem faster than they actually are. Everybody wants to be looked at a certain way by a college coach, by their peers, whatever it is. Everybody lies, right? So it's a self-reported stat, too. Unless the college coach visually sees you run it, he is not going to believe a word you freaking say because he's not an idiot. He knows that everybody lies. So I wouldn't get so caught up in the exact time, I would get caught up on being the fastest, most explosive athlete that you can possibly be, especially at the wide receiver position. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video today. We're going to be going over some specific exercises you can do, some specific workouts you guys can do that will help you get faster. Now, in terms of the actual 40 time, I would say if you're, you know, trying to play division one wide receiver, I would say a four, six and below. Right? Like, so if you're running like a 4 3, like obviously that's freaking insane, but like a 4 6, a 4 5, 4 4, those are the types of DBs that you're going to be going up against. They're going to be that fast. So that's kind of, you want to have some kind of speed to your game. Now, listen, if you're a huge wide receiver and you may be clocking in a 4 7, but you're like 6 5, 6 6, it's not the end of the world, guys. Like, you could always get faster, but like that's. It's okay. You make up for it in other areas like your height, like your size, your ball skills, your route running, etc. Right now, let's say you don't. Let's say you're on the slower side of things. Let's say maybe you're not the fastest wide receiver. What can you do to improve your speed? So this first exercise is going to be like just pretty much like a seated box jump, if you will. Now, doing exercises like this, like this seated box jump, this is something that a lot of wide receivers I think would benefit greatly from. These are called plyometrics. So any type of jump training where you're jumping onto a box, you're jumping over a box, you're trying to be as explosive as possible. Because I'll tell you this right now, what speed is built from is from your fast twitch muscle fibers. But you really have two types of fast twitch fibers, fast twitch A and fast twitch B. Fast twitch A is what you want to focus on. You don't really have to worry too much about that. But essentially what it is, is you want to train movements that are all out effort and you want to try to move as fast as possible, right? So doing box jumps or doing, you know, any type of plyometric is a great way to do that. You were trying to be as explosive as possible, trying to jump as high as you can, activating all of those fast twitch fibers in your body. And by you activating those, you get more and more of them, which is what translates to on field speed. Now, listen, this is where a lot of people get caught up in the, oh, the speed is just genetics conversation. Because like, some people are just born more, whether it's genetics or whatever it is, with slow twitch fibers, right? Like, so like, let's say you're inherently a really good, like soccer player, you're probably going to have more slow twitch fibers than fast twitch fibers, right? Like if you have a crazy gas tank, you're running great distance, you're running long distance, but then also like you're not very fast, you probably have more slow twitch fibers than fast twitch fibers. And that can be fixed. That can be worked on. It's harder work than a guy who maybe was born with more naturally fast twitch fibers, but that's what you want to try to focus on. And how you build those things by doing these types of exercises, plyometrics, jump training, any type of explosive training. Now, in the gym, this is a great exercise that you guys can use or great types of exercise that you can use, and that's Olympic lifts. So this is an example of a hang clean, right? I'm sure all of you that play high school football are probably pretty familiar with what a power clean is, what a hang clean is, what a snatch is. I would look up different types of Olympic lifts because what is this guy trying to do? He's got a lot of weight on the bar. He's got probably 225 on the bar. He's trying to move it as fast as he can, and he is trying to move as explosive as he can from his hips, from his legs, and from his core. A lot of those things you activate when you are trying to run fast, right? When you're trying to run a 40, whatever you're trying to do. Because with the four, let's talk about the 40-yard dash technique, the start 
guess what you were trying to do? You're trying to be as powerful as possible from the start. I don't know if any of you have had speed training before on the 40-yard dash, but on the 40, that first five yards, they call it a drive phase. You're trying to be powerful and explosive, take powerful strides. Guess what that comes from? Doing powerful exercise in the gym, hence the name power cleans, hang cleans, push press, push jerk, snatch. All of those exercises increase those fast twitch fibers. You're trying to move weight, which serves as resistance, as fast as possible and as explosive as possible. There's no better way to improve those fast twitch fibers. And this is something that I wish I did more of when I played. Because we would do these exercises and I never understood the reason why. Like I was like, man, I want to do bench. I want to do squat because I could feel it. I could feel the results. I could see the results. But doing these exercises, I was always kind of like, man, I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to give it my best because that's what they're asking me to do. But I never understood why until you get on the field. And then you realize, man, I'm cutting like crazy fast. I'm explosive. I'm getting off the ball quick. You know, you notice all these things and you're like, okay, that's what it's from. And that's what I wish that a lot of athletes would understand. They don't just have you guys do it to do it. There's a reason for it, right? And if your school isn't having you do it, I recommend you doing these types of exercises. So Olympic lifts are great for you guys to get faster as well. Now, one other thing that I want to add before we get in this clip here, and we're going to talk about why speed's important on a game realistic level, why it's important that you should worry about your speed, but also training with some kind of resistance is important, you guys. So like, like, let's say you got a sled at home. Running with a sled is great. Running with a parachute is great. Running uphill, running stadiums. These are all things that I did. Like I remember I would run hills. I would run bleachers at a stadium, right? Like you'd run sprints up some stairs. Um, I'd run with a sled. I'd run with a parachute if it was windy outside. Like all of these things, guys, tie into your speed. And you have to do them. You have to do these things. And it's a process. You're not going to get faster overnight. We'll get people who ask us questions like, Coach, I need to get faster in two weeks. How can I get faster? Like, it's going to be pretty dang hard to make substantial gains with your speed. You might make a few. Like, if you have really bad running form and you focus on your form, that's another thing. When you're doing these resistance-type trainings, maybe focus on your form. Focus on your stride. Focus on your foot strike. All of those things, fellas, is what's going to help you get faster. But it's not going to be – Rome wasn't built in a day. It's not going to happen overnight. You have to be consistent. If you can consistently do those things, that we talked about in this video, plyometrics, explosive lifts, running with resistance, training with resistance, you will get to become faster. You just got to chip away every day and get 1% better. And that will make you that much faster on the field. Now, why is it important to have speed on the field? And I think it's pretty much a given, but I want to show this example. So this wide receiver is going to be running an out route and he has inside shade press coverage, right? So he attacks this DB inside, takes an outside release, makes a break. DB, DB holds a little bit, right? There's a little bit of a Jersey grab right here, which is what allows him to recover, but still tight coverage. You got to have some kind of speed to be able to win in these scenarios. Because if this DB is just way faster than you and he could just recover and close fast, it's all for nothing, guys. Like you got separation. Yeah, you did this, you did that. But if that DB is substantially quicker than us, he's going to have the upper hand every single rep. Guys, you don't even need to be faster than your opponent. Like, like let's say, for example, we're going over 40 yard dashes. Let's say he's a four, like 4.47 four, and this DB is like a 4.38. That don't matter. That's you're still fast. That's not that big of a difference when you're on the field. That's why I wish so many guys wouldn't get so caught up on the exact time. You just gotta have a little bit of speed. You gotta have speed, and you gotta know how to control your speed as a receiver. And that's what's most important. And that, honestly, fellas, is what they're looking for at the next level. No, but again, like the forty yard dash is great. But like, let's say you're at a like a college camp, and let's say you come in and you're a receiver and you run a four six, like cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not like super amazing. It's a great time. Don't get me wrong, but that's not going to turn any heads. Like that's kind of what they expect you to run. If I'm being honest with you now, if you run a four, four, then some guys are going to be like, Oh dang, who's that kid? Let's see if he could play. Right. But uh, with an asterisk next to the four, four, let's see if he could play. But if you're four running a four, six, you got to dominate on the field with your technique, how you could play, how you get separation, how you catch the ball, like you win reps. But if you're fast, like, yeah, it'll turn some heads, but you got to back it up. So don't worry so much about the exact time. It, you're only going to turn heads if you're a 4-3 or a 4-4. That's it. That's the only time it matters before you get to that NFL combine stage. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand that. Don't get caught up in the exact number. Focus on being as fast and as explosive as possible. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like access to 70 plus speed and agility drills that'll help you guys get faster and do all those things that we talked about in this video, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.